I'm impressed. <laughs> Good morning. Happy New Year. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Wonderful to see you all. It's like we have a whole new different congregation again today. It was so weird on Christmas Eve. 60, 70 people here. Pretty close to that. And I think there are only seven Peace Lutheran members like you out there that night, right, Luann? It was, yeah, it was a lot of new faces. Yeah, it was so strange. A lot of people traveling and, and then family coming in. It was fun. For announcements, Church Council will be meeting this. Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. as we start the new year. And this is the last Sunday of our angel theme. It's been real interesting and uh, very moving, following the angels through the Christmas story. And with that, our last time. I invite you to prepare for the lighting of the candles and the angels among us. more than ever. Jesus was barely a toddler, and his trouble with the Roman Empire had begun. Jesus, the Savior of humankind, becomes a refugee forced from home by oppression and violence. How might we usher in more life in the face of that which feels destructive? Thank you. 
Holy living God, blessed Jesus, guiding spirit, alive within us the flame of joy this day. Grant us openness to hear your message. Grant us courage to be your messengers in the world, creating more joy in the midst of fear. And with the angel messengers above us, among us, and within us, we say, gospel reading today is from Matthew, the second chapter. Normally throughout this series, I have been playing the angel, the messenger. But in this last story of our angel series, the angel is going to come to Joseph in a dream. There will be a different messenger today. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in the province of Judea at the time when King Herod reigned. Not long after Jesus was born, Magi, wise ones, or seers from the east, made their way from the east to Jerusalem. They made inquiries, and they said, Where is this newborn who is the king of the Jews. When we were far away in the east, we saw his star, and we have followed it all the way to worship him. But King Herod began to hear rumors of the wise one's quest, and he and all of his followers in Jerusalem were worried. So Herod called all of the leading Jewish teachers, the chief priests and the head scribes, and asked, where does Hebrew tradition claim the long awaited one will be born? The scribes and priests answered, an ancient Hebrew prophet, Micah, said this, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are no poor relation, for from your people will become a ruler who will be the shepherd of my people Israel. Herod called the wise ones to him, demanding to know the exact time the special star had appeared to them. And Herod said, Go to Bethlehem and search high and low for this Savior child, and as soon as you know where he is, report it to me so that I may go and worship you. Then Herod sent them to Bethlehem. The wise ones left Herod's chambers and went on their way. The star they had first seen in the east reappeared, a miracle of that, of course, overjoyed and enraptured them. The star led them to the house where Jesus lay, and as soon as the wise ones arrived, they saw him with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they gave Jesus gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And then, just as Joseph did a few months before, the wise ones had a dream warning them not to go back to Herod. The wise ones heeded the dream, ignored Herod's instructions, and they returned to their homes to the east by a different route. After the wise ones left, a messenger of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, take the child and his mother, and head to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you it is safe to leave. For Herod understands that Jesus threatens him and all that he stands for. He is planning to search for the child and kill him. But you will be safe in Egypt. So Joseph got up in the middle of the night. He bundled up Mary and Joseph and they left for Egypt. He and his guardian angel's words. 
After a few months had passed, Herod realized he had been tricked. The wise ones were not coming back. Herod, of course, was furious. He simply ordered that all boys who lived in or near Bethlehem and were two year, years of age and younger be killed. He knew the baby king was his age because of what the wise men had told them. I invite you for your speaking part to follow in the bulletin as we continue this story. This sad event has long been foretold by the prophet Jeremiah. Rachel's weeping for her children, the children who are no more. She weeps and she refused to be comforted. Joseph, Mary, and Jesus stayed in Egypt until Herod died. This fulfilled yet another prophecy. The prophet Hosea once wrote, Out of Egypt I called my son. And after Herod died, a messenger of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. You may go home now, take the child and his mother, and go back to the land of Israel. For the people who were trying to take the child's life are now dead. So Joseph got up and took Mary and Jesus and returned to the land of Israel. Soon he learned that Archelaus, Herod's oldest and notoriously brutal son, was ruling Judea. Archelaus might not be any friendlier than Herod had been. Joseph was simply afraid. He had another dream, and in this dream he was warned away from Judea. So Joseph decided to settle up north in a district called Galilee, in a town called Nazareth. And this too fulfilled what the prophets have taught. The Savior will be a Nazarene. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator. And from Jesus Christ, God's only Son, Amen. Some of you are online today. Welcome. <coughs> and you are here in person today. And I would respectfully submit that this Sunday is the most important Sunday of the Christmas season. And you are here today. But first, let's go back to Christmas Eve. I kind of touched on it a little bit at the beginning of the service today. And Leroy, you weren't supposed to be here, but you were here on Christmas Eve. And we had such a fun, joy-filled, light-filled Christmas here. And as I was commenting, I think I looked out and saw six or seven Peace Luther members, and every other person here that evening was a visitor. And Lenny started to play, and it's like the voices just filled this sanctuary. There was one little girl between five and eight years of age, and I could hear her voice over everybody singing. And people sang with gusto. We opened up with joy to the Lord. And they even did the do not be afraid. They joined right in with that do not be afraid. And the family that came was a pastor who took me and six other pastors on July of 2017 up to the Boundary Waters. He was our leader. He worked through Luther Seminary, and this was a trip for 
just pastors, he and his daughter took us, his teenage daughter. And just before the service started, I went out in the narthex, and there he was standing. And I just, my draw literally dropped, and I just stared at him like, what in the world are you doing here as a pastor in this church on Christmas Eve? He's a pastor, he should be in his church. And then he says, well, he's staying with his family up by Lake Superior in an Airbnb, and they came here. And it was his family who all sat there that just brought their complete joy. His mom was retired at Lutheran pastor, and they just sang. And to me, it felt like, and I think Lenny would agree, it felt like they were the angels among us that evening singing to us. And we were so blessed to hear their voices. And that truly, this whole theme of all of these weeks and Sundays, holy cow. And even the Christ candle, I just looked at it, the Christ candle, um, was not even burning that brightly on Christmas Eve. And here it is, burning brightly. And it was complete joy filled that night. But you guys are here today, and we are past Christmas Eve. And you guys can handle the story. You can hear that story. And the story that I don't want this congregation to ever forget. I don't, I say a lot of things. Never forget beginnings and endings in the gospel stories. Beginnings and endings are important. And I want you guys to remember that word has to God's loving kindness. And the third thing for this congregation is I don't ever want you to forget this story today that Jesus' life began in violence. We are through the Christmas Eve and now we are back in the real world. Not the real world, but we're through the nostalgic thing of Christmas Eve. And this is how Jesus' life did begin. And that verse we read today about Rachel will not be consoled Rama. That is right outside of Jerusalem, right by Bethlehem. And you can go to Rachel's tomb to this day. She was the mother of Joseph and Benjamin, Jacob, way back in Israel's history. And she died in childbirth, giving birth to Benjamin, the youngest of the 12 tribes of Israel. And what Matthew wants us to hear with the killing of Herod going after all the boys around Bethlehem, two-year-olds and under, and it's harking us back to the Moses story and Pharaoh going after all the boys born. This violence. Yeah, so I'm sure this isn't the story you hope to hear this Sunday after Christmas Eve. It would have been much funner just to show up and just all sing Christmas hymns together again. But you guys can handle this. That's why it's an important Sunday. Again, though, we've been following angels this season. And what does the angel say? Every time an angel shows up, what does the angel say? Do not be afraid. But this time, when the angel shows up in the dream to Joseph, he is, the angel is saying, words to the effect of be afraid. Be afraid. Get up now. Take this child and flee to Egypt. Be afraid. And Joseph listened. And he was afraid. And aren't we all afraid at times in our lives because without a doubt, Pharaoh's and Herod's still live. But the good news of this season is that Jesus did defeat the Herod's in our life for all time. Jesus did defeat the Pharaoh, all Pharaoh's that have ever lived. So on the cusp of this new year, do not be afraid. You guys can hear this story and be the messengers. Do not be afraid. What is God calling you to 
be and do this year now. And always here. And not to be afraid. Amen. I invite us to sing the Christmas hymn, What Child Is This? And as we sing this, I do want you to pay particular attention on hymn 296, this hymn that we are familiar with, Christmas hymn, to verse 2 as we sing this. of the people for the online congregation. I will say we hear the message of God. My battery has just run out. Didn't happen Christmas Eve. God is good. For the last time again, I will say, we hear the message of God, and I invite you to respond with, do not be afraid. With wonder and thanksgiving, for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. 
merciful God, broaden the church's hospitality and welcome. Open our hearts to any in need of refuge and help, especially those who are persecuted. Prosper the work of Lutheran immigration and refugee services. We hear the message of God. Life giving God. Increase the joy and praise of all living things. In the coming year, strengthen local, national, and international efforts to prevent further harm to the environment. We hear the message of God. Do not be afraid. Liberating God, deliver your people from cruel oppression. Increase justice in every nation and keep the dream of freedom alive. In this new year, bring the blessing of peace and put an end to violent conflict throughout the world. Again, we pray especially for the Ukrainian people. We hear the message of God, not to be afraid. Uplifting God, raise all who are bowed down by trouble and need, especially individuals and families living in poverty. Protect and nurture all children. Sustain those who parent, teach, and care for the young. We hear the message of God. Do not be afraid. Abiding God, accompany this community in the coming year. Increase our love for one another and the neighbors we serve. Enrich our worship and deepen our faith. Sustain our pastor, our council, and all who minister in your name. We hear the messenger of God. Do not be afraid. Loving God, the holy innocents who perish in every generation are safe in your keeping. We give your thanks and praise for all the faithful who have gone before us into everlasting life with you. We hear the message of God. Do not be afraid. Proclaiming the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. We hear the message of God. Do not be afraid. Amen. The peace and love of the Lord be with you always. Be well in Christ. Peace of the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. 
and true. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. In the beginning, you set everything in motion, creator of heaven and earth. You splashed the sky with lights and stars, sun and moon, wind and clouds, rainbows and winged ones. With a word, you brought forth the waters, the waves, the mountains and the valleys. You called forth our lives from the dust and called it very good. And so we proclaim this ancient song with all of the saints and angels.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, sustain you now and forever. Amen. Um, I invite you to sing our post communion doxology. Praise God for whom all blessings flow, sets the tune of O come, O come, Emmanuel. To sing our sending song, hymn number 290, Go Tell It on the Mountain. And I invite you to stand for this. For this last Sunday, you have a bulletin insert. Get up and go, more life. And again, you'll be invited to remain in the sanctuary and to write your prayer for the new year on the back side of your bulletin. As for the last time together, we sing, Do Not Be Afraid.
Know that your prayers will be heard. The Christ candle, I do invite you to follow. Drop your prayers in the fellowship hall.